In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the work that I've been doing with the SDS2.NET API. Um, and I'm going to be transferring members from SDS2 as well as all of the connection design information over into Tecla Structures. So here I've applied shear uh, tab connections all over the job. And on column webs, I've got extend pass flange. And then um, basically over here, I have one failed member because I put in a really high load or end reaction here. So that way um, it would fail. But then everything else is all being uh, calculated at 50% UDL uh, by SDS2 and then it's designing the connections. So just a brief note on kind of the SDS2 setup. I mean, it's it's got a pretty powerful, um, you know, connection design engine. Um, and it's, you know, really fast in the sense of, you know, applying and designing all of, especially your standard shear connections on the job. And so if you're a Tecla Structures user um, uh, and you also use SDS2 and you've got your SDS2 licenses, essentially this is really handy in that you can use the connection design engine in SDS2. And with this prototype, I'm gonna show how, showcase how I can get that data over into Tecla Structures. Um, so essentially here, there's a lot of great setup here for connections. Basically you can come in and set up your different framing conditions. So like for instance, beam to beams, I can scroll down until I find wide flange beam to wide flange beam. And here I can see the definitions for what type of connection um, that I want to use. And so here we're using shear plates. And you can use a lot of the detailing defaults for like minimum edge distances, number of bolts and things like that, or you can override certain things here. Um, and so essentially you can set this all up for different framing conditions. And then um, if you actually go into the design, uh, you can come in here to design settings and you can say what um, design specification are you using and then, or a code. And then also here, this is where I'm putting the 50% UDL. You can also consider um, essentially looking at uh, composite uh, setups as well. So if you've got composite floors and that composite, uh, you know, like concrete thickness and things are being considered into the connection design and the strength of the connection, then you can do that. And uh, then also like, you know, just to kind of take a look at this, we have schedule of minimums. So you can kind of set up like your nominal depths and what minimum row of bolts and what starting points do you kind of want here. Um, and then STS2 will use those as a minimum to start and then kind of design the connections around that. So pretty, pretty powerful setup. And again, you just kind of, you get all this put together as the detailer or in coordination with your connection design engineer. And then now what I'm gonna showcase is we're gonna get this model and all the connection data over into Tecla Structures. Now, how does this kind of work? Well, essentially we have a member number in STS2, which is a unique number for every, uh, every member. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use that member number to map and remember connection design data from STS2 and link that and map that when I'm applying connections and Tecla structures. All right, so let's go ahead over to Tecla and we'll take a look at this. Okay, so I've got my tool opened up here and there's no file transfer happening. Basically, I have both SDS2 and Tecla open um, at the same time on my computer and uh, they're both installed on the computer, same computer. And I'm just using uh, the APIs to scan stuff out of SDS2, store it in memory, and then I'm uh, creating Tecla objects using the, uh, the Tecla API and then creating those connections and mapping that data just all through memory here. All right, so... Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say SDS2 to Tecla. Now, the workflow might be where you actually do your stick framing in Tecla structures and you want to export that over to SDS2. Um, that's something I'm going to kind of be testing out and working on and creating the members and then creating the connections and then returning the data back into Tecla structures. So that's one workflow. In this example here, I'm just going to showcase that I built the model from scratch in SDS2 and then I'm going to bring that over into Tecla structures. All right, so we have this apply connections option checked. So I'm going to just do the members and the connections all at once. So I'll just press this button here and it will apply everything. Now, if you look at the lower left, essentially it's going to showcase that it's putting in all the members and you can kind of see the progress here real time. And then what it'll do is it'll start after the members are inserted, it'll read for the member numbers and then get the connection data and start applying all the connections across the model. So there we go. We've got all of the connections here. Uh, pretty quick, um, actually, like, you know, just 18 seconds, essentially, to do this. We have the one failed connection. So we can set the object representation in Tecla uh, to colorize this. And so we can showcase that no connection has been applied. And then um, essentially, when we go throughout all the other connections, let's say I just double click and open up this dialog box. We'll see here that um, for the COPE information, I'm actually reading in the exact COPE data that STS2 calculates since that ties to the design. And I'm just feeding that in uh, through the manual uh, COPE override dimensions here. And so that's actually just putting that in uh, inside of the model and on this component rather than letting Tecla calculate its COPEs. So there we go. You can actually see that there. So the number of bolts, uh, the bolt uh, grade uh, that came from STS2, like the, all of the welding information, edge distances, 
um, essentially all of that information is coming across. Now over at the extend pass flange connections, um, we can see here that in some cases, the stiffeners needed to go to the column web. So corner clip data that's calculated, uh, the weld sizes, whether the uh, stiffeners are going to the web or if they're not, all that data is coming across. So if we see that basically here, you can see in the model, and if we go back over into SDS2, and we just navigate to those specific spots, you'll see here that there's the full depth ones going to the web. Um, you can see that the bolts are TC bolts here. Uh, the SDS2 is pretty neat in that it shows kind of the spline length. And so then if we come over here, we can see that this is partial. There we go, so just partial stiffeners. So all of the data has been mapped and has come across. Um, so if we just go back into Tecla real quick, Essentially what I can do is even the even the side of the shear tab has been mapped like uh, actually the near side and far side of uh, SDS2 is calculating that there's a setting to either do offset shear tabs on each side of the beam or put them all on the same side that information is coming across and I'm actually putting that in correctly. Um, but also what we're seeing here is the colors in the model, which also showcase um, basically the connection design data. So whether it's been passed, what the capacity of the connection is versus what the uh, calculated end reaction from SDS2 was. Um, and then also if I inquire on this, the member number is coming across um, in here as well. So if I scroll down, basically we have this member number. So like in this particular case, this is member number 66. So you can kind of see it right here or sorry, 65. So if I actually come in here and type in 65, and then I just say load that connection data, this is all of the mapped connection data, um, which in the API, they're called lockables for a lot of the connection input values on the member ends. And so I can see all that data. And what I'm doing is I'm just mapping all of this information over in the Tecla structures. So let me close this down, go back to SDS2. And so what I'm talking about is when I double click on this, um, in STS2, the connections are uh, typically input and defined within the member edit dialog box, whereas in Tecla, it's separate components that are applied at the, you know, kind of between the connecting members. Here um, in the supported member of the beam, I'm specifying this connection information and all that uh, connection input parameters here, like for the shear plate, the bolts and all that, this is all those lockables in the SDS2 API. I'm able to extract that and map that over to the Tecla components. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.